Welcome to HB Discover. I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News, and uh, this is our first interview of the day of a really exciting three-day week that uh, is coming up, or a three-day uh, exhibition, I, I might say. I uh, wanted to go ahead and uh, welcome a uh, guest, uh, Dr. Jennifer Murphy from HB Mobility, and welcome to the show. And it, Thank this you, is, Andy. This is not your first time at HP Discover. No, no, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> HP Discover veteran. A whether, veteran. It's, uh, whether it's here in Vegas or whether it's in our, our, our EMEA event, which uh, tends to go different places in Europe. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'd call myself a Discover veteran yeah. at this point. <laughs> so, but you've come from Europe uh, now to the US uh, in the mobility organization. That's right, that's right. So uh, I basically, I, I started off with HP in the UK and I moved over to the US about six years ago when I worked in, uh, moved to software. And now I'm uh, leading the team that looks after uh, three core areas of our portfolio, enterprise mobility, uh, performance and virtualization. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there has to be no more business critical uh, area of, uh, of study and practice than mobility because by nature people are mobile today. Exactly, you're exactly right and if you just look at some of the stats around it, you know we did some research um, and by 2020 there's going to be one trillion uh, applications, a lot of those are going to be mobile, a mm. hundred billion different connected devices, you know this is everything from smartphones to tablets, you'll see out on the show floor wearables as well, so mobile is everywhere and you're exactly right, everyone is mobile mobile so it's just a natural part of everyone's yes. lives so so what's the biggest challenge are there things that you assume uh, in creating applications mm -hmm. normally that automatically port to mobile that don't yeah well I think the thing is is when you look at mobility um, there are a lot of commonalities you know because ultimately you're you know you're building an app well, so, an example of yeah so you have to common. I mean you have to you know you've got to develop that app you've got to test that app you've got to go through the full mobile application life cycle so you've got design and build you've got optimize and validate which is the testing you've got to distribute the app get it out to people and then you have to monitor and manage the app to make sure the user experience is is okay and it's where you need it to be the difference with mobile is why one is the nature and the architecture of the applications. They're a lot more task-based. So previously, you know, when we were looking at, you know, there's a lot of focus on back-end architectures. Now it's very task-based applications, small, simple, fast, and lots of focus on the user experience. People don't want big, clunky applications. They want beautiful, high-performing <laughs> applications. They want cool apps. They, they, they become spoiled. <laughs> exactly, yes, exactly. Yes, We've yeah. all been spoiled by the world. And so I think that's one of the big differences. And there's also differences in the way you test applications. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you've got mobile, I mean, you know, think of a conference like this where everybody's on the Wi-Fi. You need to be able to test your mobile applications, how they're going to perform under different network conditions, mm -hmm. uh, and how they're going to perform on different devices. How a smartphone behaves is very different to how a tablet behaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in indeed. And of course, with bring your own device, that just mm -hmm. uh, makes that an even more critical portion of the development process. Definitely. And, yeah. and the way we look at it is, you know, we don't even say that it's bring your own device anymore. It's just bring your own. And then, you know, you either put an X at the end or you put an S at the end for stuff because you know <laughs> people exactly people bring their own devices they bring their own apps they bring their own content so you know it's just and if you want to do BYOD you don't just have to look at you know policies and things like mobile device management or mobile application management but you're exactly right you have to think about it in the design and build phase because if you truly want to enable BYOD you've got to do cross platform yeah, but but how do you maintain an enterprise perspective you're you're mm -hmm. so um, consumed with trying to make it uh, easy, attractive, mm -hmm. and in alignment with what they might have in the consumer world, yep. it would be tempting to shortcut some things that are really mm -hmm. important. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're right. And the way we look at it, a sort of a theme that we talk about is enterprise mobility without compromise. And normally when our customers Im implement enterprise mobility, because they're in such a hurry to get you know, a mobility strategy together, get their first app out of the door to remain competitive. Sometimes they compromise on things like quality, okay, because they're trying to release fast and they compromise on quality. So they don't test properly and they don't put the right monitoring in place to be able to say, okay, even if we didn't test everything, are we monitoring the user experience? So if something goes wrong on the app, we can fix it immediately. And the other area is security. 
you know, security is a big concern for a lot of uh, our enterprise customers. And so that's a key area where if you want to truly have, you know, you've got to balance with security. You need to make sure that you're protecting enterprise data and personal data, especially in different verticals like healthcare or banking. But at the same time, you don't want your security policies to be restrictive to the end user. Because the last thing anyone wants, I mean, you know, how many times when you download an application and you see that whole spiel about, you know, I can get all of your data, the end user agreements. Now, to be honest, about 97% of people don't actually read that. But, you know, there there are, when you look at it, you sort of think, well, hang on, do I really want to give everyone access to all of this? Especially if you use the same device for work and personal. Right, indeed. Well, one of the things I was, was thinking about the world is changing so quickly mm-hmm. and let's say you've done all of the, the right things to design an attractive app and, and mm-hmm. to test it thoroughly and security and so forth how do you ensure that a year from now all your assumptions were valid how do you keep that up to date yeah so the key there is analytics I mean like with anything analytics and understanding what people are doing with your application is critical so you know whether it's monitoring the application um, you know there's different methods to do that you can just monitor the app when it's in production it's on the users you can instrument the app when you actually build it Mm -hmm. but learning and understanding how are people using the app what features are they using where are they using it and it allows you one to make sure that you're constantly iterating you know because the world of applications it's not just build an application once a year you know, we'll maybe do two releases right, a year. Right. I mean, if you look at someone like, you know, Facebook, they probably do 28 releases a month. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. that's one a day. Mm-hmm. They're not giving that new app to everybody, but they're iterating constantly because they're constantly doing A-B testing, understanding what features work, what features don't. So it's, it's a really important part. Analytics is a, a huge part of the end-to-end life cycle. Yeah. What's, what's the most fun part of your job? Oh, most fun part of my job? Uh, I actually really enjoy like doing interviews like this, speaking with you know industry analysts, people in the industry, speaking to customers and learning about their challenges. It's interesting because sometimes you know you um, you sit there in, in your office and you, you're like, right, I own you know this area, and you sort of do all the research and everything, and, and you think you know what's going on, but then you go speak to a customer and they throw you a curveball, and you're like, oh, okay then. <laughs> That, that, that wasn't what I was expecting. So I love it when customers do that to me because then it makes sure that I'm making yeah. sure that we're doing the right thing You know, exactly. at HP. We're building the right product, we're telling them the right message, we're helping them with the right problems. So you know, it's that, uh, that ability to get insight and information from our customers. I, I love that, it's, uh, it's the best part for I, sure. I, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Where is the best place to go for more information about HP's role in mobility and to uh, learn more about the topic? Sure, so obviously I would say for those who happen to be lucky and be here in Las Vegas, you can always go to the show floor, but uh, you can go to uh, developer.hpanywhere.com and there you'll find a lot of information about our mobile app dev platform, uh, which is focused on mobility, and lots of the other products and offerings that we uh, have in the space. And also a blog with some uh, best practices and tips and tricks from uh, various people that we've worked with. Excellent, excellent. Anyone in the mobility space at HP that's active on Twitter? Um, so I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. We've also got a uh, John Jeremiah, yes, uh, as well, who's a, a good good Twitterer. Um, so yeah, he gets some good information out there as well. Brian Copestick is another mm. one of my great colleagues. Um, you can find him on Twitter, and he specialises in government and public sector, mm-hmm. and that's uh, that's that conflict, you know, government public sector restrictive, um, but they still want to be cool and do mobile. So that, that's an interesting one with Brian. Yeah. So yeah, Brian and John, I'd say uh, two great people, and then myself, you know, just at Jennifer Murphy, and uh, you know, I try and get the latest info out there as well. Okay, well, Jennifer, it's been such a pleasure to meet you and have a chance to talk. You, you've illustrated uh, um, admirable levels of patience, which <laughs> always happens in the first uh, interview of the uh, of the week as we get things uh, set up. But thanks very much for joining us. Excellent. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank thanks you, to you folks for joining us as well in our continuing coverage here of HP Discover. Live streaming of SDR news coverage at HP Discover has been made possible by Intel Corporation. Check out Intel Open Port IT, where you can connect with your peers at Intel on industry topics, best practices, strategies, and more. And by Microsoft, where HP and Microsoft are working together, combining their respective strengths to deliver innovative technologies to help advance your business. 